done. Three weeks. I did it. I did it. Hey, it looks good. How'd that tutorial go? Hey guys, Pee here, and this is Hopi, my wig mom for today. Ooh. I'm gonna be talking about creating volume in your wigs without foam core. Basically, we're gonna be teasing and just letting it be hair. Everything you see here, save for these little horns, is all hair. And these techniques are really great for when you don't want to use foam core, you're worried maybe your wig might get too heavy if you use foam core, things like that. There are definitely ways to create volume with just hair. And to get this wig this big, we're going to be putting two wigs together, so we're going to be talking about wefts and how to insert them into your base wig, which is the wig you start out with. We're going to be talking about teasing, and we're going to be talking about how to clean it up to make it look really nice and get that volume in that crazy shape. And you can use these techniques for fun shapes like these, or you can use them for straight spikes like in a Sora wig or a Dragon Ball Z. It works for all these techniques, and well, that's about it. So let's get started. Ah. Okay, so we have our base wig, which is a Jareth Long and Black from Art of Wigs. And the first thing we're going to do to it is add volume by putting in another Jareth XL. We've taken it apart. This is called deconstructing or harvesting or just de-wefting a wig, which means we're cutting all the elastic out to leave the individual rows of wefts to add to our first wig. That's going to literally make it twice as thick. And there are lots of different ways that you can add wefts to a wig once you have either a pack of wefts by themselves or have harvested another wig. And you can either glue them, which is, I suggest always using a flexible glue like fabric glue, tacky glue, something that clears dry as well is really good to do. Or you can take a needle and sew it. So we're going to talk about both ways really fast. First, we're going to talk about sewing wefts into your wig. For this, I'm just going to be using some white thread so that you can see it easier, but it's best to match the thread to your hair or your weft color because sometimes they are a little bit different. All we're really going to be doing is laying the weft that we pulled along the elastics. This one matches up very well. So we'll take it, sew against the elastic and the weft, pull through, and give a few quick knots. So you can see as we're sewing, it's not necessarily the cleanest lines, but you are going to be using thread that matches your hair, so you really won't be able to see it. All you need to do is go until you can give a little tug. It doesn't come out. Give one more for good measure through both the elastic and the weft. Pull it tight. Then you'll just knot your thread, cut, and you'll move to the next one. Now we're gonna talk about gluing our webs into the wig, and that's both a quicker and slower way. It's quick because it involves very little time of you actually handling the wig, and slower because you have to wait for it to dry. So, all you have to do is line up your webs again, make sure you're good, then you add a little bit of glue to the webs elastic, here, here, just little dots. You don't want so much that you lose all the flexibility in your elastic. Then you take your weft, a straight pin, line it into the glue, make sure you're right on the money, poke your straight pin through to hold it in place. Then you'll go all along with that same technique. And these straight pins are what are gonna hold the weft in place while it glues. And so you wanna make sure they're in there really tight. And what's nice about this is you can do weft after weft in rows because these straight pin, the little dots, don't get in your way. Okay, so now that I've talked about the different ways, I'm gonna go ahead and put all this in this. What I like to do when I spike my wigs is I first piece everything together to try to get just an image in my head to see if I have enough hair for each individual section. Uh, for this wig, I'm just going to kind of be, I don't really have an exact image that I'm going off of, so I'm just going to kind of fill it out. But what I'll do when I separate my spikes is I kind of just pick an area, make sure it's got a wider base than it will have at the top. You can kind of just pull to see what your general idea is going to be. Even if it's shorter, you can get a, a feel for it. 
then I'll take rubber bands. I bought a real cheap bag, one dollar, tiny little rubber bands. These are perfect. Just take it, tie it off, and that gets it out of my way so that I can move on to the next spike. tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's pretty simple, but maybe it'll give somebody some ideas for their own wig style. You know, this is just one way that I like to put volume in wigs, and uh, I'm glad that I could share at least that. Uh, if you do have a question, go ahead and leave it a comment in the comment box, and I'll try to get to it as fast as I can. Or you can visit our Facebook, which I'll link to in the description, so you can check that out too and see a lot of our other wig work, mine and my twins. Uh, so again, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, I'm done. So... I guess I can go to sleep. <laughs>